viewer questions answered. Welcome to Landry on Gun YouTube, here to help you break through fears and live an awesome life. So we're going to work on that today. Now I have quite a few questions coming over here that I think are going to apply to most people. I like to pick the ones that I consistently get over and over again. So I'm going to read some to you. Unfortunately, it's coming off of my computer here, so I have to like uh, not not watch you for a minute here. All right. So Landry, I want your advice. I used to suffer from severe anxiety, depression, and chronic insomnia. Boy, do, how many of you are doing that, right? Some, wow, yeah, some crazy stuff going on out there. Um, that had me mentally crippled and housebound for a long time. So before we continue on with this, you're always in control. You're always in control. When you experience these feelings, uh, I want to just share with you something uh, coming from the most compassionate place that I can. And that is, it is effing tough to be on this planet. Yeah, not everybody's like me. You know, I, I, I've got a pretty tough skin and I'm a very sensitive person. But you have to buck up and be tough if you're going to survive on this planet in a positive way. Because that's what's going to get you past not because you want to su struggle and suffer, but it's going to get you past that pain that we experience as humans to realize that it is that I do have control, that I can actually connect to that which I am. So I want you to understand that when you're experiencing all this stuff and it's just really painful, it's because that's not your natural state of being. So when you transition to this and you take on some really tough stuff, you forget your natural state of being because if you knew that and you knew all the that this was not real, it was just a play that we're experiencing, you wouldn't get to experience the play, right? You know, when you're on this stage, you know that you're going to eventually step off of it. But we don't know that when we come here. We know we're going to step off of it sometime, but we take that play so seriously. And it is real. It's not a role that we think we're playing. When you switch over and you realize it's a role we're thinking we're playing, that we do get to get off the stage and take those clothes and that makeup off and go back to what we are. So what you're feeling is that what we are is so amazingly beautiful and perfect and that there's no suffering. So when we come here and we experience something that's so foreign to us, it can take us into a tailspin. So that's what a lot of you are doing. You just like it's just too painful to be here, but you don't get out of anything. So don't even go into that space where you're going to exit. Even if you did your job here, the longer you stay here and raise the frequency of the plan. Extra credit, big kudos. All right. Um, so I'm going to finish this, and I've got a few more questions I'm going to answer for you guys. Uh, oh, okay. There we go. I'm on a Mac. All right. Let me bring you over here a little bit with me. Um, this person had a spiritual waking, awakening. Um, so then they, they say, but as the months pass, I'm still struggling as my anxiety and limiting beliefs are relentless, especially with regards to my insomnia. Well, you're not awakening in the way you think you are. So we, I, when people tell me, of course, we're all on a pathway to awakening, but then they say I, I went into awake and stay. Well, I can tell you from my own experience and from people like even Eckhart Tolle who who shared this and, and some, some super high level spiritual leaders, uh, you don't stay in that awakened state. You can't function in the world if you're in that super awakened state. You will come down a little bit so that you can actually talk. <laughs> I remember just not wanting to talk. It, I couldn't even relate to humans. It was like, just not, not in a negative way, it's just like there was nothing to say. I didn't have anything to contribute to a conversation that held no interest for me because it was too much of an effort. It really was. I was in such a euphoric space. So what will happen is if you went into a awakened state and then you come back down, be careful. You can go back into the lower frequencies uh, because, you know, life kicks in again and then you have to deal with you still have to work on getting into that state maybe releasing things that are still hanging around and energies that'll continue allow you to go up and up and up and pretty soon you drop off the weights and the balloons floating and you get to pull away from it so that you may find yourself going back and forth so don't don't freak out about that it's not it's not uh black and white 
Um, I mean, no, it's not black and white. Nothing ever is. Um, so, uh, so my sleep deprivation puts me in a grumpy mood. No, it doesn't. You do that. Nothing puts you in a grumpy mood. You put you in a grumpy mood. You're telling yourself something, and physical physical things can really affect you. That's why I tell you guys, it's so important to take care of yourself. Eat right. Get out and exercise. If you can't sleep, as soon as you're able to, and it's safe, you go out for a really long walk. Go outside in nature, and, real, and then you'll come home, you'll be exhausted. Trust me. Um... Uh, I'm angry because I'm not living the life I desire. Okay, we're not awakened, honey. You got to get some work to do, man. You got some work to do. I'm angry because I'm not living the life I desire. Well, yeah, so then go live the life you desire. See, this is the separation is critical thinking, uh, let's say, that must be released critical that that thinking must be released in order to connect to your power. The insomnia is making me grumpy. I'm angry because I'm not living the life that I desire. Do you hear yourself? We do. Uh, seriously, listen to yourself sometimes. Sometimes, you know, I'll sit there and I was like, okay, Who's talking right now and what are they saying and how ridiculous does it sound? Because if there's something I don't like, I have to take the action. So my thoughts are, all right, so how do I, how do I shift into the reality that I desire and what am I learning from where I am now that maybe I would like to change? There's never anything really bad, you know? Um, uh, even with the new awareness, I'm not hearing the new awareness. I'm hearing that you're aware that you're not aware. <laughs> And doing the inner work for several months. What? Yeah, what? Sounds like you're still listening to, uh, you know, our friend here who's asleep. Sorry. I woke him up. Hacker T is usually in control and he's our ego and he's really cute and everything, but he doesn't, he's not always giving us good, good advice. I'm almost 30, broke, single, unemployed, and still living with my parents. I'm not hearing any action in here. I'm hearing that I'm awakened. Here's this separate thing that I am. But then I'm angry and not living the life I desire. And I get grumpy because of these things. And I'm angry because of these things. And then I hear you saying as if it's something separate from you. So when you realize that this is not separate from you, when you're really awakened, you're not even connected to that blame and life. That's I get angry because, well, then stop getting angry. Who's doing that? So this is the separation that I talk about all the time that is absolutely the biggest block. You separate yourself from the world. You see the world as a problem. You see others as a problem. You tell yourself that if you didn't have those people or those situations that you'd be okay, and that's so the opposite. You have to be okay with those situations for you to go to the awakened state to remove the blocks so that you can live the life you desire. That's the biggest job we have is to see the other as something really beautiful here on its own journey and maybe it's not so nice and maybe it's crabby and maybe it's test testing us all by design my friend all by design and you chose it so don't say that was inflicted on you either how do i keep my vibrations vibrations high when constantly fatigued and grumpy from sleep deprivation how do I keep my vibrations high while being grumpy? You can't be. You can't. So stop it. What, there's, no, there's no separation. You're not dealing with the issues. You're not seeing why am I in that situation? Why can't I sleep? Why am I getting grumpy? Why am I living with my parents? Why don't I have a loving relationship? Why am I broke and I'm unemployed? Doesn't sound like you're going out and looking for a job. Are you? If you go out with an attitude like you have in this email, this comment, you don't realize that you're sending those negative vibes out. And I share with you guys in my business videos, I wouldn't hire somebody with an attitude that thinks that I'm supposed to give them something. Heck no. Who would you want to hang out with? Right? Be what you desire to attract. And as you know, I don't even feel that there's any attraction. I think be what you desire to connect to. 
Be the frequency of that which you desire. And you will fall asleep and sleep like a baby. So there's, I keep hearing the separation, the separation. That's making me feel I'm on a waking journey. And then that's over here bothering me. No! Wow. So a lot, so some of you talk about being uh, demons and all this stuff, visiting and stuff. That's a frequency. So I talked about like the dark entities and this stuff. If you're in a lower frequency and you're vulnerable, fear is a lower frequency. So you could be the nicest person in the world and kind and giving, but if there's fear, it's a gateway. And sometimes if you're if you are you're we're going into that expansion of that spiritual world where you might find that you're seeing more things, you're picking up on intuition, you guys your abilities are increasing. Pay attention to that. That's real stuff. Use it. It's amazing. It's what we all have. So if you have an open gateway, sometimes you'll notice that things uh, will appear that appear to be negative. They're not. They're just, it's like another person, you know, out here that's not so nice. That's all it is. But because it's unknown and we feel like we don't have control over it, well, I'm going to do one on aliens too. I think everybody's like fearful, first of all, because we're told that these guys are nasty. They're not. When they kind of try and come down here, all we do is shoot at them. We, you know, we're lied to because we're treated like idiots that can't handle the truth. So now we can't handle the truth because we're told we can't. When you bring down those barriers to the unknown, we're fearful with things that are unknown to us or we're told they're unknown to us. As soon as you know what it is, or you have an idea what it is, you can create your relationship with the unknown. You create the relationship with the unknown. So, uh, like, I've had, I've had dark entities uh, visit me. And, you know, you know the old, you know, holding you down kind of... I'm not tolerating, tolerating that. Last time that happened, it's been a long time. Especially if you're lacking sleep or whatever, and you're open, you know, whatever. Um, uh, I basically, you know, laid the ro lo rules down. <laughs> law. I laid the law, the law down. And so you have to just, you get free will. To, you get to control this. This is why when we have visitors from other planets are not truly interfering because they're not allowed to. Free will would be violated. They can help and assist, just like your angels can, your guides, and other people. Right? So don't try and impose yourself on other people and in your ego and everything on the world. No separation. No separation. And when you go into the, the dark entity world or you think there's demons and stuff, you are creating that reality. If you want to tell yourself there's demons, that's fine. They don't exist in mine. To me, that's just a lower frequency expressing itself. Yeah, it's, it's horrible, but I don't go there. You know, let them all fight with each other. That's where, the, that's where the dimensions start to split. You don't experience that anymore. You're not on that frequency. They're down here, power and money and winning the lottery because that's all their life is about the money and getting stuff before they give to the world. And up here, people are giving to the world first and experiencing total peace and abundance not even needing the things that other people think make them happy, but getting it anyways. And sharing it and loving and saying, oh my gosh, there's another world, there's heaven on earth here that exists, and I'm seeing it, I'm opening myself up to it. There's no sleep deprivation that's going to make me grumpy. I get to choose if I'm grumpy. Here's my test. Can you be sweet? You know, when I'm really tired, I, I'm, I'm very sweet. I mean, I... I, th I get goofy, right? Do you get goofy? Why? Because there's, there's no anger or, or fear in there. It's like, okay, you're sleepy. You, wanna go, you know what I do when I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning? Instead of the world telling me I need to sleep certain hours at certain times, I get up and I work. It's great because I love what I do. I'm writing e-courses for you guys and stuff. I work and I write. And then, like, I'll work for four or five hours, take an hour nap, and get back up again. Who, who says you have to sleep a certain way? Maybe you're only supposed to sleep a couple hours. You know, Margaret Thatcher used to sleep just a couple hours a night. Quit making these rules up. Sleep deprivation. 
Well, maybe you just don't need it. Quit being grumpy and blaming that. So this is the other thing. We're blaming outside sources constantly. And this is what I'm hearing. All right. Um, and uh, B Floss, you know I love you. Uh, you are always working on it. And he says he's always getting tested. Yeah, you're always going to get tested. Every time you think you got, oh, I'm oh, and that, oh, and the demons, and that, and you, then you realize, wait a minute, I just created some really messed up world, and I need to work on stuff. Um, all right. Uh, so somebody said, you know, when they go in and they, um, when they go in an, a store or something and they smile at other people and, they, and they, they're more lighthearted, you change the energy in the room. You change it for other people because they are sharing that energy. And so sometimes they can't help but be nicer. And if they are not, that's okay. So just remember, your energy is affecting all these things around you that you say are a problem. You are actually fueling it. So you're on that frequency of whatever it is. So here's a question. I'm going to go back to the person who's giving me every, you know, 30. That's a big one for people. I don't know why. It's just another day. Uh, broke, living in your parents' basement, unemployed, can't sleep. Okay. There you go. How are you going to change it? You put yourself in that situation. How did that happen? How do you get out of it? And even if it came from other people's influence, you get to choose if you go along with that or not. If so, they told me, all right, so now you know better. Get out of it. Go. Live your life. Do something. Do what you need. To. Wait. I waited tables before. I was horrible at it. I got really good tips, though, because I was funny. They felt sorry for me. And then after I waited tables, oh no, I was working for a landscape company during the day, and then I was waiting tables at night. And then I'd come home with my cash, my tips, and I'd count them, count it out. <laughs> and I'd write down exactly, and I'd put it in a box. I was very excited about that. So, um... And then my dad bought me a car when I turned 16, but he treated me like a bank. Yeah, I, uh, he treated himself like the bank, and he said, you know, you can pay me back. So that was really cool. So I earned that, and I paid him back for my car. He didn't charge me very much, but I had a cute little Mustang with bucket seats, leather bucket seats. It was pretty cool. There was some great, amazing feelings that came along with that. You can't blame say, well, I don't have parents that did that. <laughs> so create it yourself. Say, okay, I'm going to do certain things and earn it. It's going to feel so good because you become a different person on that journey. I'm the person who's going to say, okay, here's my situation. I'm going to change this situation because I'm going to start to act and think like a completely different person. And that completely different person no longer is acting, thinking, behaving that way. That completely different person might go out and get two jobs. And all of a sudden, you're out of the house. You're earning money. It feels good. You start to know what you want. Your resume starts to look a little better. And you come home exhausted. And you're finally sleeping. And then maybe you add some exercise in there. Or you start eating healthier. And you tell your mom and dad, you sit down and say, hey, listen. Man, am I lucky to have parents that will let me sleep in, my ba in the basement. Thank God you have parents. People are homeless out there, right? Nobody's door to knock on that's going to let them live in the basement. Unemployed. So I'm hearing a lot of self-pity in that. And that me, 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 it's about me. So why don't you look, turn it around and give to the world. What's giving? Serving. And you'll be paid for that. When you wait ta tables and you treat people nice instead of resenting waiting tables. I don't want to be here. I'm too good for this. You've seen that before. Do you tip those people well? No. Oh, no. That energy's negative. Be the best at 
Be the best waiter or waitress. They're amazing people. Amazing. A lot of those people make really good money. And then maybe I happen to know some people that are actually going to be buying the very restaurant that they were working And I talked to you guys about this. I said, what if you're waiting tables and then you become the manager? And you're the best manager and you're working long hours. And then eventually you buy the restaurant. That's how it works. But the ego doesn't want to work hard. It wants to sit and win the lottery or do whatever. And by the way, I use the lottery as a mentality, not that the lottery or anything else is negative. It's how we use anything. Are you grateful for what you have? It doesn't sound like it. It doesn't sound like you're grateful that you have a damn bed to sleep in. And parents that are letting you stay there even though you're unemployed, my parents would say, get out there, get off your butt and go get a job, which I always did. I was a very hard worker, even at menial jobs. You're in control. So this is another kick butt. We're going to get a lot, we're going to get our butts kicked a lot in 2019 in a lot of ways. Get ready for that. I'm going to be one of these uh, let's just say voices for having you not give excuses anymore and starting to make that change because when you do it you're going to wake up in a way that's going to just blow your mind you're going to realize how much you've just sat there and blamed the world and felt sorry for and everybody else and that you held the power about how you think somebody just said oh I can't, you know I, I get all these thoughts and it's well who's doing it Knock it off. Three second manifesting. Go over here. What am I doing? What's a better thought? You don't have to have some big goals over here. What's a better thought? Boom. I just raised my frequency. Going back. Oh, boom. And then you're training yourself to be boom and not me. <laughs> sorry. I don't feel sorry for you. You're here. You have an amazing opportunity. This is a very, very difficult planet to come to, and it is major school. We experience things that other planets don't, like deep emotions and the ego. You know, there's other beings that don't even know what they, they just, they look at us like we're crazy, and we are. Who has something saying something that you don't want? That's, that's craziness. That's true craziness is when you're not controlling your very thinking and there's nobody else doing it. That is craziness, right? That's our species. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? It's time. It's time. Sorry, clock's ticking, man. When we had that earthquake here in Atlanta the other day, I thought, whoa, here we go. Get ready for some changes. And go, go along with whatever is happening that may seem scary, but is the transition that's happening. And you, if you are in that higher frequency, if you shift into the higher frequency, and you put, set your priorities to be the absolute best, most positive, compassionate, loving person you can be, your world will rock in a positive way. And it won't be an earthquake. It's going to be something else. And you're going to see the world changing in the most positive way I do. People are awakening. I've had people get a hold of me that never in a million years I thought would I could ever talk to about spirituality are contacting me and saying, I want to talk to you about this. You know, I'm seeing ghosts. Or I'm getting messages, and I'm like, wow, who are you? Awakened. And it's amazing. It's happening. We're all connecting to it, and we all know that we are so much more than just this. And, and a comment, help me. Give me money. Do this or that. You're not getting the journey. The two jobs and coming home and counting the money and going, I earned this. I worked really hard. And then being exhausted and getting up early and doing it all over again and saying, I'm here. What's my next goal? All right, I don't want to wait tables and work at the landscape company forever. What's my next goal? How can I be better? 
How can I educate myself to learn something new? You know, you guys know I have my internet training, LandryAcca.net. People have such an attitude about things. I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. You can tell yourself whatever story you want. Or you can educate yourself and take your world to the next level and become somebody completely different. You get to choose it. You are whole and perfect, strong and powerful, loving, harmonious and happy. Sleep two hours and go get on that computer and look for a job, my friend. And if you want to be grumpy, that's your choice. Nobody's going to want to hire that, I'll tell you that. You get to choose. And if you have to fake it to condition yourself and start to tell yourself a new story, then you do it until you push that negative energy out and it is no longer your pattern, your habit. And that's really mostly what it is. I'm surprised your parents haven't said, get your act together. It's time. No excuses. You're doing it. Peace and abundance. Health, wealth, light, love. Send that out every day, not just to the planet, throughout the universe. When you send light, love, healing, peace, and abundance to this planet, you are making a huge difference. Every morning you wake up, somebody said, do you set your alarm to remind yourself to do that? I don't have to remind myself when I wake up and I look out and I see the sun and I have to say, I'm here. Get busy, Landria. You've got a job to do. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. There's no other thing going on out there that I forget that I'm here to raise the frequency of the planet. And then the minute I get up, I say, I am whole and perfect, strong and powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. And when I have a negative thought, uh, oh, oh, pono, pono, ho, oh, pono, pono. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. I ask for forgiveness to the energy that I could possibly have any negative thought toward. I catch myself as quick as possible because that's an old energy and a habit of the collective that you're sharing. We've got to change that and raise it. And you are totally responsible for it. Sorry. You have that power. It's pretty exciting. Use it. Blessings, my friend. Namaste.